Okay, it is really humid in here, and I don't know why this is curling weirdly like this. I'm just going to acknowledge it, and we're going to move on. Hello, and welcome to the Freakish Lemon video podcast thing. I am your host, The Freakish Lemon, I go by Adrian, and I use male pronouns. Remember that you can find all the show notes for this episode over at FreakishLemon.com, and you can follow me on social things like Twitter and Tumblr and Ravelry and Instagram at FreakishLemon. I'm good at the intro stuff, and then I end up with the talky bits, and I don't know what I'm saying. It's really... I should plan this part. I plan everything else, but I don't plan this little part. It's, it's, it's an oversight. Anyway, hello, it's May. I last saw you in April. Because I do this show monthly. And it started getting warm outside, and I don't like it. I don't like it. I am one of the very few grumpy people who does not like spring or summer, and I just want it to be fall and winter all the time. That's why I don't know what this hair wave is doing. Because the humidity is changing, and it's warm in here, and I don't like it, and I'm going to look all sweaty and gross by the end of this, I am sure. Um, because that's how I roll. Also, fans make noise, so I can't have any fans on while I'm filming. It's pretty terrible. And there's no air conditioning in this room. We haven't put in the air conditioner. We only have one window unit air conditioner, and it goes in the living room. Because that's the most effective place for it to go. So... In future videos, you will probably see me be very grumpy. And there will probably be future videos where I have practically nothing to show you because my skin will just hate touching things. But in the meantime, it has been not deadly out. So I do have some things to share with you this month. I want to say week, but I don't update these weekly. So this month. I gotta get used to saying that. It's a problem. All the other knitting podcasts are weekly or every other week, so I gotta get used to saying this month. Anyway, enough about me complaining. Let's move on to Stuff on Sticks. This is the segment where I talk about knitting things. I have one finished object, and it is the leg warmers that I showed you last video. Uh, really easy pattern. It's the Leg Warmers pattern by, oh, where's my notes? Jane Richmond. I used loops and threads impeccable, acrylic and teal and aqua. Um, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. I did this on US 8 5.0 millimeter aluminum DPNs, because I'm a DPN guy. And, uh, they're basically tubes. But here's what they look like finished. And now I get to pack them away because I can't use them because it's hot. Which is, you know, I knew that was going to happen, but I was hoping for it to not be 80 degrees this past week. Which is a little ridiculous for Connecticut in May, I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, that's the only finished object I have. It, it seems very sad to me. But I do have a bunch of works in progress. Uh, first of which is the... Uh-oh. Everything's caught on these DPNs. Uh, first of which are my Christmas socks, which are actually kind of a half-finished object. I finished one sock. So that's exciting. I got to work on this at work for a while because a coworker was out and I have to run this report that pretty much takes up my whole computer and I can't do anything else because it'll crash. And it takes about 20 to 30 minutes. So there was a while there when I, where I was just knitting on this sock at work. 
So I have the second sock. I did a whole bunch of it uh, last weekend at on the trip up to my brother's graduation in Massachusetts. So I've done the cuff, the leg, the heel. It's, um, it's an eye of partridge heel, but I don't think um, stripey yarn is really a good way to show it off. Are you going to focus? Maybe? No, I don't think it is. But anyway, um, it doesn't look all that different from a regular slip stitch steel, slip stitch heel flap um, with this yarn. Uh, and I finished the gusset. Uh, I think I'm one row into the foot. So I've got the foot and the toes and then I'm done with my Christmas socks, which is very exciting. Uh, this is using Red Heart Heart and Soul with Aloe in the Christmas colorway. And I'm using, I already forgot, US 1 2.25 millimeter aluminum DPNs. Doing my notes on uh, my Kindle Fire this week. So you might keep seeing it in the frame as I reference it because I keep losing the little note cards I kept with my projects. That's terrible. So those are the Christmas socks. Um, I had also shown you the single rib socks by Isela Phelps from the Sock Loom knitting book because I have a sock loom and I wanted to try it out. I think I've done four rows since last episode. It's not really grabbing me. I don't know if it's because it's slow. I don't know. I can't tell if it's coming out right, which is a problem. I think if I don't do you know, another couple of stripes in this. I'm just gonna frog this. And, um, yeah, I just, it's not grabbing me. I don't want to pick it up. In fact, I forgot about it until last week. Um, like, I'll remember it once a week and be like, oh, yeah, I could do that. Or anything else. So, I'll give it one more month. And if it's not, not grabbing me. I'm gonna frog it. Because there's no point in wasting time on a sock you don't enjoy doing. It's a sock. And I know I've already screwed up the... It, right now it's just knit one pearl one rib all the way around. And I've already screwed it up. I can look on the back and see that I've screwed it up. So, heh, <laughs> heh, is how I feel about that project. Um, but I've also cast on a couple of other things. I started my Cozy Memories blanket, which I knew I was going to do. I said it in the last episode. I knew I was going to start that because everybody's making one and I want to be cool too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, too late for that. I'm never cool, but, um, here it is so far. A little cube, a little square. Um, I'm using the um, Memories Blanket Tutorial by Georgie Hallam, and I'm doing this on US 2, 2.75 millimeter interchangeable uh, circular needles. You can see here is my um, 100 Ravens yarn in the Rohan colorway that I did my Age of Brass and Steam in. This is Gnome Acres Robot Patina, which was part of a steampunk club with Gnome Acres and Tangerine Designs, who does bags. Um, here is the Mermaid Tales from The Ugly Room, who I believe is a local Connecticut spinner dyer. Uh, this one, this one, 
um, was part of my mini swap with um, Kristen from the Yarngasm podcast. This was, what was it, get my list, Sweet Georgia Yarns Magpie, I believe. And then here's some Patton's Croy that I used for socks for myself a while back. Here's some Patton's Croy SFX Cadet Colors. I used this for a pair of socks for my dad for um, Christmas a couple years ago. This is Shibui. I think is what it's called. It's like a brick color. Um, this is some of Kristen's own yarn uh, from Volan Vine Yarns. It's the Wicked colorway. And that is coming out super green on this tiny little screen. But it's not quite that green in real life. If you turned down the... Uh, saturation a little bit I think it would be accurate this is actually a little bit thinner than the other yarns but um it doesn't really have a name I mentioned in a previous episode that there is a silk dyer at the New York Renaissance Fair uh, who sometimes dyes yarn this was the first skein of yarn that I bought there um, I made a cowl out of it you can see it on my Ravelry page I don't remember what the cowl was called, but it's it's pretty distinctive if you scroll down because it's mostly these dark reds and then you get these little pops of yellow, just these tiny little pieces. Um, like, because there was only one little end of the skein that had been dyed yellow. Um, I don't remember what this yarn is, but it is um, left over from a pair of socks I made for myself. This is Mustache Manifesto from No Makers, from that same steampunk club. Uh, this is some hand-spun, hand-dyed wool from the Merry Little Lamb, who used to sell at the Connecticut Renaissance Fairs maybe six years ago, five years ago. They used to do kettle dyeing demonstrations there. Um, I don't remember what yarn this is. I'm so good at keeping track of these labels. I think I said it on a, on the last episode when I showed all the minis I had, but this was left over from a pair of socks that I made one of my brothers a couple of years ago for Christmas. This is yarn from, uh, The Swap with Kristen. This is... Three Irish Girls Adorned Sock. She didn't know what the colorway was. Um, but it's kind of a purple and a teal. And then this is Premier Yarns Deborah Norville Lavender Topaz, I think it is. I made a pair of socks out of this for myself. Uh, and that's the scraps. And this last one is from that swap with Kristen. And it is, what is it? Oh, this is also three Irish girls adorned sock in an unknown colorway. But that's it so far. Uh, I've started weaving in the ends. I weaved in the, um, the cast on ends uh, for all of these. I'm not sure how I'm gonna weave in the, the point ends yet how I want to do that. Um, the cast on ends was really easy for me to find a place to weave them in. The point ends, not quite so much. Um, but I didn't cut and excuse you, things are falling over. Um, but I didn't cut any of the little thingies. I want to at some point give it a wash first so they'll like set in or something. I don't know. It was a tip that I heard on the Knit More Girls podcast, I think, about weaving in ends. 
But that's my Cozy Memories blanket so far. I'm very excited about it. This is great TV knitting. Just as my obligatory family TV watching is about to come to a close. Because um, me and my parents and whoever else is home who wants to watch, um, we watch Flash and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. together, and they're back to back on Tuesday nights, and we watch Arrow together. But those are all going to be over within the next week or so, so we'll see how well I keep up with this now that I don't, I won't have scheduled specific knitting time for this, but um, it is fun. It's nice to, you can see progress pretty quickly. Um, I'm sure that will change once it's larger, but um, I'm excited. And I'm not, I know a bunch of people um, just started going across to see how wide they wanted this blanket to be. I'm going to keep it a square until I like where it is and then keep, and then rectangle it out. Because um, I think that gives me personally a good gauge of how big it is. Um, and how big it will end up being. So that's exciting. I cast on one other new thing. I gotta stop talking when I'm not looking at the camera. Uh, on sticks, and that is a sock head hat, um, which is a free pattern by Kelly McClure. Um, I'm using three different yarns. Uh, I'm busting some stash with this. So I'm using some Patton's Cry socks, uh, blue stripe rag, gray brown marl, and a Premier Yarns Serenity Sock Weight in black. So, and this is on... Doo, 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 US 1, 2.25 millimeter, 16 inch circular bamboo needles. And here's what it looks like so far. Oh, it's tangled. Go over there. Okay. So we started I started the brim alternating the blue stripe rag and the gray brown marl, um, which kind of mutes the uh, striping effect a little bit. Like you can see here, it's like gray and then blue and then gray because there was different stripes. There's actually very similar color changes in the blue stripe rag and the gray brown marl, but the gray brown um, has a twist of gray in it, the blue stripe has a twist of blue in it. But they're actually pretty similar colors, so it's working out really well. But I got to the end of the uh, the ribbing here, and I'm pretty sure I do not have enough of both of those yarns to finish out the rest of the hat. So I threw a black stripe in for every other row um, to use up some stash I've had for a while. And I'm really liking how this is going. This is mindless knitting. It's simple. Stocking it around and around and around. And uh, the color changes are pretty easy because I'm just changing, you know, every other round, basically. The furthest a strand of yarn has to travel is two rows up. So this will have a little bit of a seam looking area, but it's because the stripes are so small, it's really kind of hard to tell in person. I don't know how easy it is to tell on the... Yeah, it's pretty easy to tell on camera because of the way the colors are showing up, but... It's fine. I'm not worried about it. But this is nice. I'm... I have this uh, up in the Peggy Mae Podcast's uh, May Along. Um, which is a, you know, a little craft along, uh, that she put together for the month of May. You have to start and end a project in the month of May. So I figure I will probably finish this by the end of May. If I don't, that's really quite sad because it's a hat. Um, but I'm excited about it. I'm excited to see how it wears. I'm not a hat guy. But I always want to be a hat guy. I don't know. 
it would, I realized last winter that I didn't own any hand knit hats. I've been a knitter and a crocheter for over a decade now, and I didn't have any hats. I don't know. I have no sweater because I haven't worked myself up to that yet, but I have practically everything else, but no hats. I have hats now, but two of them turned out like meh. But I'm excited to see how that one's gonna turn out. Um, maybe I'll even wear it. What a concept. Oh, I don't think I've shown this bag before. This is um, the bag that came with the uh, No Makers and Tangerine Designs um, Steampunk Club, which is which is how I heard about Tangerine Designs. I have three of her bags now, but it's got these little octopi with top hats and monocles and gears. It's super cool. Um, she makes great bags and I saw an update on her Instagram that she is making Doctor Who knitting related bags. So if you are a Doctor Who fan, you should check out Tangerine Designs on Etsy for her project bags because they are great. <laughs> um, that's it for knitting. On to the next segment. <sighs> and of course my camera dies after I film the first segment. This camera charges pretty quickly though. I just watched like a 20 minute podcast. And it says it has full battery, so I'm going to trust it and move on with stuff on hooks. I have a finished object. Not any of the things you've seen from me before. I have this aqua colored mystery acrylic yarn from um, Relatives Destashing. And I wanted to add some into that scrap granny square blanket, but I had so much of it that I needed to make something else with it. So I made these amigurumi stars. Here's the first one, which is a littler one. It's got little eyeballs. And here's the second one that has bigger eyeballs and is slightly bigger. These are going to be added to my box of handmade Christmas ornaments, uh, which I keep down here because I'm going to fill up this box with Christmas ornaments. Maybe it'll be full by the time December rolls around. But this is the Amigurumi Star pattern by, oh, I can't read my thing from here, by Mohu. Um, the little one was made with a USG 4.0 millimeter, and the bigger one was made with a USH 5.0 millimeter uh, crochet hook. And these are fun. I might make a few more of these. This is... It's a really easy pattern. It's not... It's made in two pieces and sewn together. So, um, really all you need to be able to do is do uh, single crochet, chains, and be able to do multiple crochets in one spot. Um, the hardest part was the at the very end there's a spot where you do five single crochet. Uh, you can see right there. You do five single crochets in one spot. Uh, and that's US single crochet, because I think those are doubles in the UK. I don't know. But um, I think the pattern's written for both. But yeah. Quick, easy, really kind of fun to do. This one's eyeball's a little weird. This one, it keeps shifting. So it keeps, this eyeball keeps looking wonky, like, I mean, it's a black eyeball, but it keeps pointing weird because they're safety eyes. So they have that like, like screw in the back, which changes where the eyeball's kind of facing. Um, 
but yeah, more ornaments to add to my thing. Might make some more, but they were really fun and really quick and it was nice to just finish a little project in a couple hours. And that's all I finished for crochet. Um, what's next? Works in progress, my floor poof thingy that I've been working on as part of Fluffy Fibers Gentle Along is not finished, but I've made some progress. You'll remember I had to rip out a whole bunch and start the sides over. I think I was like here last episode and I've done, you know, a couple inches. Um, it's kind of hard to tell progress on this thing because it's wide. So one row can take a while. Um, but yeah, just kind of moseying along with it. Gotta get another picture of it in progress to put up for that thread, because I think the gentle along is ending soon. Um, yeah, made some progress on that. Um, oh, what am I doing on that? Um, it's mystery yarn, it's imp improvised pattern using a USJ 6.0 millimeter crochet hook. And then I have my um, granny square odds and ends that I'm still working on. I did a few of those. Uh, you can see some purples here, a navy blue, a pink, some pinks, a white, tan. Not that many, not as many as last episode. Um, US size H 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. Just doing a little granny square based on one of the ones I've seen on Attic24's um, blog. If you are interested in crochet at all, go to attic24.typepad.com and check out her blog. She has amazing crochet stuff. I don't think this square is written on there, but I think I saw it as a background in one of her photos or like she it was a photo of her kids and it was there was a similar granny square blanket on the floor under her kid's foot or something um, I don't know I don't think she has it written out there but um it's easy enough to do if you're familiar with how granny squares are constructed um, and if you're really interested in what it is, feel free to PM me. I'll let you know what I do. Um, but yeah, just a few more squares to add to the pile. And last episode, I was very resigned to the fact that I knew I was going to start a Weekender hexagon blanket because Danny from the Little Bobbins Knits started one, so everybody else started making one. And I, I did, in fact, start one of those. Alright, where's my corner? Here it is so far. It's a little bigger from when I last posted a photo. Uh, I'm starting with a corner here. Uh, most of the folks making this right now are just doing the hexagons, but this is all the yarn, well this will be, all the yarn left over from my many Doctor Who scarves that I have made in the past. I've made several for specific people. I used to make them and put them up in the shop, but I'm kind of burnt out on Doctor Who scarves since it's a million years of garter stitch. So I have all the yarn and I'm making a Doctor Who hexagon uh, blanket. And somebody uh, called it out right away when I posted it on uh, Little Bob and Snit's uh, Ravelry group for the Weekender crochet along. They thought it immediately looked like Doctor Who yarn and that's because it is. Um, what crochet hook am I using for this? This is a USI 5.5 millimeter. A lot of people are doing smaller ones because they're using sock yarn. Um, but just so as you know, if you use worsted weight or Aran weight, because I think I think the tan is an Aran weight. The rest are worsted. Um, 
and the purple. Purple's a little fatter. Uh, and you use a big hook. This is how many squares you need to get this much. Or squares, hexagons. Um, it's a really interesting pattern and I'm liking the join as you go type stuff. I don't think I'll routinely use it for squares because I like just making a whole bunch of squares and then arranging them into a rectangle and then putting them together. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's, I like to do that for granny squares. Um, but this is interesting. Um, the hardest part for me is these little filler pieces. Um, I gotta start chaining with a bigger hook because it's not quite stretched out enough. Um, but all that will be solved when I eventually do a, a border crocheted all the way along it in a neutral color. Or maybe I'll get like a TARDIS blue and do a few rows of TARDIS blue, a white, and then another blue. That's a good idea. Cause then it's like a doctor inside of a TARDIS. I'm a genius. Um, I say mockingly, um, something to think about, but I gotta stop just flailing this around, put it down. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I am enjoying it. Um, uh, what else is there to say about it? It's really fun and I like making blankets and now I'm making three blankets. So I have plenty of things to do. Yes. Okay. That's, that's really it for crochet. I felt like I had a lot more because I've been doing a lot more crochet, but it's just a, a few more projects to add to the thing. So we'll move on to the next segment. And this segment is stuff on spindles and wheels. This is the hand spinning yarn portion of the show. Um, I do have finished objects this week, which is very exciting. Uh, the first one, where is it here? I just finished it last, well, it's not completely finished. I haven't washed it and reskained it yet, but I finished uh, this green work. Bleh. I didn't even make it into the first syllable of the word. Green works. Gr mm, speaking is hard. Green wood fiber works. There we go. Uh, merino pigtail mini braid. Uh, this is the Durango colorway. I did this one um, chain ply. I'm practicing my chain ply because I'm not very good at it. Uh, parts of this are, are really nice. Uh, parts of it, not so much. So this one's not going to go up in the shop. Uh, this one I'm going to keep for myself. Focus, camera. Do it. Focus the thing. The hand trick. Is the hand trick going to work? No, it's not. Um, but yeah. It is a uh, chain ply. I did this on my raw elm drop spindle, which I really like. Um, I don't like it so much for plying. I think I'm going to have to do, I like this for singles. I really do like this for singles, but I think I'm going to have to start plying on another one. I, it, it just doesn't really have the leverage for plying. Um, it's a thing to play with. Uh, I didn't, I haven't measured this yet, so I don't actually know how much is here. Um, and I don't know what weight it is because sometimes that changes when you, uh, wash it. I, I have a feeling this is going to fluff up, uh, cause I spun it kind of woolen, less worsted. Um, so that'll be interesting. But, uh, I only have two more of these little braids left. Um, which is exciting because it seemed like so many little mini braids when I got the box. But um, I do like how this turned out and I like how the, the colors kind of blend into each other. Uh, especially for something like this where the colors are so kind of close in tone that I think um, any barbell pulling would have really kind of muted it out. It wouldn't really be all that exciting if it was barbell pulling. That's not the only hand spun I have finished. 
I finished my blue, orange, green stuff. Um, where's my little tag? This is, um, there's no name for this colorway. Like these are the things I have. Here's the card for Dragon's Wool. And this is the, the other tag. It just says super wash BFL four ounces. So there's no, no colorway for this, but I ended up getting three skeins out of it. I spun, I broke it up into six, um, it six ways lengthwise. And I spun two of them uh, for one ply. So I did three plies and then of course uh, one of them ran really short so then I did a two ply and then of course one of them was a lot longer than the other one so then I did a chain ply for that one just to see just to play around with it really. Um, so here is here's my little card for my thing. I should have prepared this before. So here is my three ply. It looks a, a lot yellower on camera than it does in real life. It's, it's, I get more of a green out of it than a yellow. Um, but there, there it is. It's really kind of squishy, which is great. Um, this is 170 yards, 86 grams, um, 14 wraps per inch. So it's about a DK weight. Um, and I'm, I'm keeping this one since this was a, an experiment. It's not really enough for me to, um, well, I suppose I could sell this one, but I want to keep it. So I'm going to keep it. And then with the two ply, I got, uh, 84 yards and 24 grams out of it. It's an 18 reps per inch. So it's sport just barely hovering on fingering weight. Um, and here's what that looks like, which is lovely. Um, it's a lot brighter. You can tell the, the colors don't blend as much and you can see the, the blues. There's not as much orange barber pole around the blue. Like there's some spots where the yellow does, but there's not all three colors together at, at any point. It's just kind of bright orange, bright blue. And then my last little chain ply bit, you'd think I'd be able to spin, I spun these except for the first ply all within a week. You'd think I'd, I'd, I'd have spun them similarly enough that they wouldn't run out so drastically. Um, but this is the chain ply. It's only 24 yards, 11 grams, 13 wraps per inch. So it's a, another DK, but it's just all orange leftover, orange and yellow. Um, it's a little choppy in spots, uh, where I was getting the hang of doing chain ply on my wheel. I think I got it by the by the end of, of spinning that, I think I got into a good um, rhythmic thing to get that plied up properly. Um, this is really squishy too. It's actually a little bit more squishy than the three ply, which is interesting to know that a chain ply is a little more squishy than an actual three ply. Uh, just handy things to know when you learn spin. Um, because I, of course, I'm still learning. I, I mean, anything I spun before last year, I, I couldn't even tell you what's in most of it. Just you know, like, I don't know. It's wool. I spun it. It was fun. It's a thing. It's a learning process. Um, but this is actually really nice. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to make with these yet, but I'm very excited for whatever I do make with these because... That was super fun. And I do have some stuff on the wheel upstairs and I forgot to bring it down.
but it's not really much anyway. Because that two ply yarn of this um, BFL came so close to fingering weight, which was one of my practice goals was to get down to a fingering weight. I've, I've gone ahead and started the big 20 ounce ball of wool that I got at New England Fiber Fest, um, or New England Cheap and Wool, whatever that thing is called up in Massachusetts, um, which I think I talked about in the first episode, but my plans for that big 20 ounce thing of fiber is to spin it to a fingering weight, or as close to a fingering weight as I can get, and knit, oh, I can't remember the name of the pattern now, but it's a giant maple leaf shawl. Um, I'll put the link in the show notes because I had been looking for yarn for it off and on, but I found that huge ball of fiber and I was like, that's perfect. I will just spin all the yarn I need for that giant shawl. Um, I will probably have enough to do two of those shawls or three or forever. I might have this yarn until the end of time. But um, I'm very excited that I'm finally starting it. Maybe I'll even finish it in the fall to, I don't know, put it on a table or something. I can't see myself wearing a giant maple leaf, but I think it would be a cool fall decoration of some kind. Um, but that's really it for spinning for now. Uh, I'm planning on, on finishing up those two mini braids. Um, and really just digging into that giant thing of fiber. It's very exciting. But that's it for this segment. Which leads us to stuff with thread. Which is very exciting this month. Very exciting. I have talked about my stupid dragon quilt. Every episode. Uh, I think the first episode, episode I showed you my, my dragon quilt notebook with all my fabric samples and my dragon fabric and my pattern, um, which actually came out of this book, The Weekend Quilter, um, edited by Rosemary Wilkinson. It's a Reader's Digest book. I got it off of Paperback Swap. I troll their... Um, craft section. It's usually not really all that great, but sometimes you get stuff like this where it's, you know, conceivably if you didn't have to eat or sleep or do anything or buy anything, you could make these quilts in a weekend. Um, but it's the A Piece of Summer quilt. That's what the pattern is. And I finished it. I just sat down and finished it two weekends ago. It's very exciting. I'm going to show it to you right now. This is a moment where I'm really grateful that my camera has great wide angle lens type stuff. Because I'm about to show you about a twin size quilt. Here it is. I know you can't see the whole thing, but I'll show you pieces after you get a, a gander. And here's the back, which is just space. It's very exciting. It's very exciting that it's finally done. So, where's my dragons? They're in the middle. See, my dragons, I didn't have enough dragon fabric to do the little triangles in all of the pieced together squares. So there are, I think, five. Let's see, one, two, yeah. There are five in the middle. And then the rest of the pieced squares are the space. And I have the blue and the green and this great purple. There were very few purples at Joann's that really went with anything. It was very weird. It was a weird selection of purples. But this great focus. 
It's a great purple with some yellow and green and lighter purple vines in it. Um, the yellow has a bit of a pattern. It's a bit of a flower pattern. I don't know if you can see it. It's very, it's a very small pattern. And then this red, um, it has vines, but from far away, it looks like fire. So I didn't do very much quilting on this because it's, I don't have a, you know, free motion quilting machine or anything. It's just my, my, my sewing machine. Um, so I, I quilted in the ditch, um, on everything. And then I mimicked the ditch on the pieced squares, uh, on the just plain old squares. So just, you know, the diagonals here, and up and down. And then for the border, I did these little bits. And then this is actually the width of my plastic ruler that I use <laughs> upstairs. It's like a two inch, maybe two and a half inch ruler. And then again, and then the binding. And I did the same thing with the binding that I did on my first quilts. I don't know why I thought it would turn out any differently. I'm using the binding shown on, it might be a free class on Craftsy, a beginner's quilt class. I don't remember the name of the class, but she makes a, a mug rug like this big. And I used the, the binding technique on there where you make your own binding. Um, and what she has you do is, I think it's two and a half inches and you press it together in half. You sew the raw edge here, like you, you line it up so, so your binding's like this, and the raw edges are all together. You do a quarter inch around, and then you fold down and over and around. And in hers, she's good enough at this and has done quilting enough that she can just pin it around and then basically sew in the ditch on the front and it'll catch everything in the back. Now, I I did manage to catch everything in the back this time, um, which is an improvement over my first quilts, but I have parts of the binding. Let's see if I can find one. Where it looks fine like right there, you know, it's just a little bit. I don't know how well you can actually see this on camera, but then there are parts like right here where you have nearing half inch uh, of flap. Well, it would be flap, except I, w I went in there and I hand stitched down all the edge. I had told myself I was going to hand stitch the back of the binding anyway because I knew this was going to happen, but I thought maybe I could do it. I had done so well with everything else. And not really so well. <laughs> There's a lot of rookie mistakes on here. Uh, like I have this almost a pocket from this pucker here. It's just a little, and I didn't go back and fix it or try to fix it. Um, I figure I'm going to make mistakes. My quilts are never going to be perfect. None of my projects are ever going to be perfect. I'm just going to embrace the mistakes unless they're the worst thing ever in the world. Um, it's something I've been trying to to keep on with um, in my crafts because I sometimes you just get in a rut where you just want all the things you make to be perfect and nothing is ever perfect. So it just makes you mad. Um, but it reminds me of, um, oh, where did we go? In my junior year of high school, I went to Spain with a class trip. And we went to, I can't remember the name of the place, but it's in Granada. 
Um, and we went to a couple of other places. We went to La Mesquita and I think one other mosque. Um, anyway, Muslim architecture uh, is phenomenal. It's like mathematically gorgeous and the carvings are amazing and it's the most beautiful thing in the world but it's never perfect. They always build on purpose something wrong, something off, a, a purposeful mistake because um, their philosophy when building these things was that only God can make perfect things. So you'd have this beautiful, beautiful thing, this beautiful structure. It's like mathematically amazing. Like you can stand in one spot and see through like five different windows clearly out into these gardens. It was amazing. But there would be one pillar in the wrong place. Um, so I'm trying to just accept minor mistakes in my stuff. I mean, this is the first quilt that I've made that's bigger than my arm length. Um, <laughs> my other two quilts was just, you know, like this. They were squarish, so they were about a yard, a little more than a yard. Um, but this actually covers the top of my bed, which is a twin size bed. I, I think all the quilts in the weekend quilt are twin size quilts, because that's, you know, not that big of a quilt. But it's just so exciting that it's done and I can just have it with me and squish it. It's finished. Um, and that's a great feeling because of how much I fought with this quilt when my sewing machine was dying last summer. So um, I'm already looking at next quilts I'm going to make. Um, I blame my grandma. Can I do that? Can I just blame my grandma for picking this up? Because I think we're going to have to. Because my grandma's a quilter and it's her fault that I have any knowledge of how to do this. It's her fault. So that's very exciting. Ugh. It's cumbersome in my weird studio setup here in my room. So let me get this out of the way. Um, so finished object. Um, I still haven't finished, where did it go? There it is. I still haven't finished my Christmas cross stitch from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, but I did start on the last A. So I've got the most of the door. I have a wreath, I have a garland, I have some of a tree, and there will be an angel here. So I have been working, everybody it seems like has been picking up Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery cross stitch patterns lately. So hopefully I'll finish this one soon. I say that every month because it's a Christmas cross stitch, but hopefully I'll be done now that, you know, I'm seeing other people working on theirs and I'm actively working on it. Hopefully. But hey, some pro progress is better than no progress, right? That's how I'm choosing to look at this. Okay, the camera did lie to me. It didn't have a full battery. And I've charged it for another 20 minutes. Hopefully I can finish this episode before I just plug it in and charge it for real. <laughs> I really should have charged this camera before I filmed today. Everything else is prepared. Didn't charge my camera properly. Anyway, now we're going to move on to... New stuff, uh, which is very exciting. I got some very exciting packages in the mail. The first package, oh, only spook when you're looking at the camera, dummy. Okay, so the first package I got was some mini skeins from Diane over at the Peggy Mayarn podcast, which is very exciting. Let me grab them. You could hear the rustling. There's one. Here's another one. See if we can get as many colors as possible in here. This one. This 
this one. Are you gonna focus? Maybe. No, I don't think it is gonna focus. Oh, there we go. And this one. This one's really kind of muted, which is nice. It reminds me of sand. Is that a weird thing to say? But you know when you look at sand from far away, it's just kind of a light brown, but if you look at it really closely, you can see like little flecks of mica and like where different colored rocks have eroded. Am I the only weirdo looking at sand? Probably. Um, <laughs> but thank you so much, uh, Diane. Um, these are lovely. She just asked me for my mailing address and sent me some. So I bugged her this week and said, I need your mailing address. I can send you some because you gave me such lovely yarn. You can't just, I can't just not send you something. I sent a package out in the mail to the UK. So hopefully you get that soon, but I'm very excited to add these into my blanket. She also sent me a, a candy bar and I ate it immediately before I even opened the rest of the package because that's how I roll. Also, I got these when I just got home from work. I come home from work starving, so I have to eat something immediately. Yep. Um, so thank you so much for that yarn. I got another group of minis uh, from Ellie Knitter, who posted in the Yarngasm podcast, Yarn Swap um, thread. And she sent me, she sent me this fox card and she sent me some tea that I might have already drank. And she sent, or where are they? Here they are. She sent me these stitch markers. I have one of the little blue ones on my um, Cozy Memories blanket because it's a really easy one to just slip off. And it's not... Most of the stitch markers I have that I like to use are dangly ones, but I found out really quickly that for the Cozy Memories blanket that the dangly ones get in my way. So it was actually really great that she sent me these stitch markers because I just threw one of those on there and it's working perfectly for me. It is not in my way, which is a great thing. And these are the minis she sent me. She sent me this one, which is a gray with a little bit of a sparkle in it. She didn't send a list um, and neither did Diane, but that's fine because I will just knit these and enjoy them for what they are. There's this one. There's this purple one, which actually, um, in the last episode, I showed uh, my Avengers mini skeins from No Makers, and there was that Hawkeye one. I love the current. Well, it's like semi ending. I don't know what's going on with it, but the the Matt Fraction Hawkeye run of the comics. And this actually reminds me more of Hawkeye than the Hawkeye yarn from No Makers. The Hawkeye yarn from No Makers, you can tell, is a little more movie inspired. This is, that whole comic is basically black, white, and these two color purples, which is a fantastic thing to behold. Um, they, they, the, the artists on that book tend to do you know, on a page is only going to be a little bit of color, but the, those two per, these, the two main purples, there's kind of three purples in here, but only really two are showing up on the camera are like the Hawkeye purples, which is exciting. So I'll have a, a proper Hawkeye square too, <laughs> as long as, as well as a movie Hawkeye square. And there's that. And there's that, which is lovely. And this, which is really fun. I can't wait to see how this nets up. There's so many colors in here. And then there's this. And this. 
this, and this is the last one. So thank you, Ellie, if you're watching this. Um, I'm so excited to ball these up and add them to my blanket. I have so many minis now, it's so exciting. Um, I've actually uh, been enabling my sister. Uh, she's been collecting minis to, to put together for one of her own. And she came over a few weekends ago. She had bought some minis from my shop. She bought the Enting hand spun and a couple of the other minis and she came over and uh, I ended up giving her some of the other spare minis I had. Just, you know, ones that I had like three or four minis of and I already sent two of them off. So I gave her the rest of my minis. <laughs> so the only minis I have now are ones that people have given me and that's it. And the ones that I bought. I don't have any leftovers left until I finish some other things with sock yarn. Um, which I think is in a good place to be, <laughs> uh, as far as, as mini skeins go. Um, it's, it's very exciting. Thank you so much, Diane and Ellie, for all these lovely, lovely minis. And I got one other package in the mail. Um, I had joined on a whim, uh, the Phoenix Fiber Company, um, Rolag Club. I joined for three months. They, they have an option for like one, three, six, I think one, three, and six months. I did three months and it was really kind of affordable. I think it was like $35 for three months. And, um, you know, it's mystery Rolags. Um, you get two ounces each month. That seems like a fair price to me. And this was the one for April. Um, it's kind of like seashell pink and purple and white and blue. Let me grab one of these. It's really quite sparkly. I don't know how well it's sparkling in the camera. Just wiggle it a little. See, you can see all the little sparkles. Um, I'm really excited to spin with this. I've never spun with Rolex. I've only ever spun um, combed top braids and um, my mom bought me some yarn, or not yarn, uh, some fiber over the summer down in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, that was, it was somewhere between comb top and a bat. Um, I think more structurally like a bat than comb top, but that's the only thing that I've spun that wasn't, you know, a braid, basically. So I'll be really excited to see how this spins up. Um, and I'm excited to get this month's. Uh, cause this is lovely. I don't know what I'll do with it, uh, but I can always figure that part out later. And the only other things that I've gotten new for fiber related activity. I have bought some fabric, but I'm still thinking about things to do with it. Um, I, I do have plans for a quilt, but it's kind of after the next couple of quilts that I'm going to make type plans, so there's not anything really concrete, just starting to look at colors. Uh, but I did end up buying a couple of circular needles. Um, I had to buy that uh, the bamboo needles for the sock head hat because, uh, where did it go? There we go. The only size one circular needles I had were these ones that I had bought for doing two at a time socks magic loop style. Um, Cause I have a book two at a time socks, um, which is fine. I, it was fiddly. I wasn't very quick with them. And it was interesting to learn how to do magic loop. Um, 
which these are good for magic loop if you're doing two socks at a time because there's enough cord here that it's not going to try and pull apart or if it is it's only going to try and pull apart at one end i don't know what i'm saying but i tried to do magic loop on the hat with this and the cable just wanted to separate the yarn. It, it didn't want to do magic loop with the hat. So I had to get, you know, 16 inch ones. And while I was there, I saw these, which I'd never seen before. And on the last episode of the Yarnings podcast, uh, you can see, I think, US size four um, ones. But they're nine inch circular needles. I've never seen these before. Like, this is the size of my hand. Look at how small that circular needle is. There's nothing in the back. It just goes in there. The tiniest freaking needles I've ever seen in my life. So, of course, I had to buy them. Um, I think next pair of vanilla socks I cast on, I'm just gonna cast down with these and see what it's like to make a small tube with this. Because this is ridiculous. Look at how long that needle is. It's like an inch and a half. That's ridiculous. So of course I had to own them. I had to own them because they're the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. And I'm delighted by them. So that's very exciting. <laughs> but those are all the new things uh, this month that I got. Come on camera battery, let's last through one more segment. This is stuff for Etsy. Oh, there's actually two more segments. But anyway, stuff for Etsy. I do have some stuff that's going to go up in the shop. Um, I went a bit so crazy this week. Um, but first thing going up in the shop isn't sewing, but I just remembered it was there. They were hidden. I'm going to put up the listing for Fitzsimmons. Uh, this is the finished pair of little hand-spun mini braids that remind me of Fitz and Simmons from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um... Which is a roller coaster of a show. I, I don't think I could watch this show if it wasn't tied into everything else, but because it is tied into everything else, it's very it's it's an interesting thing to be watching for me. I don't know if anybody else is enjoying it, but there's Fitzsimmons. There's Fitz and here's Simmons. And they will go up as a single listing pair. And I made a whole bunch of project bags because when I learn how to do something and I like it, I tend to do a lot of it all at once. So I've made a bunch of project bags, but I think I'm moving on to a new thing to make a whole bunch of uh, soon. So unless you really want these, uh, if there's high demand for them in the shop, I'll keep making them. But uh, if not, I'm going to cool, cool it on making these for a while. Here is a Star Wars one. This is a very interesting fabric. I might make myself some pajamas out of this fabric because it's kind of great. Here's just some music notes. Here's Batman. Here is Superman. Man of Steel. Here's some food. I liked the fat quarters. I, I'm a sucker for fat quarters, what can I say? And uh, here is Spider-Man. Now this one's actually a little bit different than the other ones. The inside fabric is heavier than the others. Um, so it will feel different than the other ones. It's more. It's more of a like an apparel fabric um, than the basic like quilting cotton out here. Um, I don't know. It was laying around and I needed some red to go on the inside. Oh, let me show you the insides of these. There's a red one. Uh, I think the food is also a red one. Yep, food is also red. Different red, but red. Uh, Superman is gray inside. Batman is uh, navy blue. The 
Music Notes is a gray. And uh, Star Wars is orange on the inside. Orange. Yep, so those will be going up in the shop this weekend. If not this weekend, then next weekend. I do have to still take photos of all these bags, so it was kind of last minute. Uh, I will let you all know um, in the comments below, uh, in the, the box down below on YouTube, um, if I actually succeeded in putting them up or not. Uh, yeah. And then other stuff. I'll go through this quickly because my battery's gonna die. Um, other stuff. Stuff I'm watching. Uh, Daredevil repeatedly. I think I've gone through the whole series four times. I've only actually watched it with my eyeballs all the way through about a time and a half, but the Netflix made their announcement about the assisted audio stuff for the visually impaired folks out there, and uh, I heard a sample of it on one of my um, media podcasts I listened to, and it sounded really good, so I just started leaving Netflix on with the audio assist and just listening to it uh, while I'm crafting upstairs in the craft room where I don't have a, you know, big screen to look at. I just put it on my iPod, put it in the speakers, and I just listen to it like it's an audiobook. And it's really great that way. If you really liked the Daredevil series on Netflix and you liked watching it, try listening to it. It is really cool. Um, also, Game of Thrones has been really great this season. Um, we're starting to come up on all the edges of all the stuff we know from the books and that's very exciting because we're going into uncharted territory. Some of the characters are already in uncharted territory which is really interesting to watch. Um, and I've been binging more knitting video podcasts because that's how I do things. Um, what am I reading? I'm still reading Night Watch by Terry Pratchett. I'm really enjoying it, but I'm, I keep not reading it. I think the problem is I start reading it and I don't want to stop. A lot of the books I've been reading over the past couple of years, I've mostly been reading on my 15 minute breaks at work. And I get into it and I don't want to put the book down, but I have to go to work or else they'll fire me. Uh, so... Uh, I read a huge chunk of it this morning while I was having my snow tires taken off of my car, so uh, I'll finish that probably soon. Uh, and it's really good. It's really good. I really love Terry Pratchett books. Um, yeah, stuff I'm playing, still Lego Lord of the Rings. I don't think I've played it all since the last episode um, with everything going on. Uh, my brother's moving back from college and my one brother graduating and... Uh, Gabber's bringing the dogs over on the weekends. It's been crazy town, so just hasn't been a priority for me. Um, podcast recommendations. For the knitting podcast, I'm going to recommend the Peggy May Yarns podcast uh, with Diane over in the UK. She's here on YouTube. Uh, I think her username is Peggy May. Uh, she's Norfolk Wools on Instagram and Etsy. She does uh, some dyeing and with the really great colors. One of these days I will buy some when I'm allowed to buy yarn again. But I'm not allowed to buy yarn until later this year, so not right now. But um, she's great and I love her podcast and um, I love how much had I love seeing her projects and you know the things she likes to do and the things she's learning to do. She's like picking up crochet now. I don't remember if she said it, if she had known it before, but if she had, it had been a while. So it's very exciting to, to see. And she's great. And um, she's always quick to like my things on Instagram. So I, I really appreciate that. It's nice when people like the things I post. So, so here's me recommending uh, the Peggy May podcast here on YouTube. In my non-knitting podcast, I'm going to recommend Coverville with Brian Ibbett. Um, Coverville is a music podcast. It's an hour and a half to two hours. Um, 
but you know, you can listen to it whenever since it's all music. It is all cover songs. And Brian Ibbett um, has kind of built this podcast. It's been around for a long time. There's over a thousand episodes. Uh, right now he does one a week and um, he's kind of built this cover library based on you know, B-sides and rarities and, and folks who cover songs and make them different when they cover them. It's not just, you know, a word for word, a note for note cover of a song. It, they change it, they change the style of it, or they add interesting vocals, or it's, it's a really great show. And I, I, I don't really listen to the radio, so Honestly, this is how I learn what songs are out there, is I hear covers of them on Coverville, or covers by new artists on Coverville. There's some great music on there. And um, his website is a great place to go to if you're looking for covers of an artist or covers by an artist. And he has, you know, music history, music trivia, and he'll, wow, motorcycles are loud. Um, <laughs> It, it's a great informative podcast. Sometimes they do, uh, uh, he does like trivia contests with his wife at the end. It's a great podcast. Um, it's great to listen to, great to craft to if you can't be watching something while you're crafting. If you need to, you know, all eyes on the project, it's a great thing to, to have. It's great in the car. Uh, I listen to it on my commutes because I have an hour to an hour and a half commute. Uh, every morning and every afternoon. Um, because Hartford's an hour away from here, which stinks, but I listen to a lot of podcasts in that time, and Coverville is, is a great one, so I highly recommend it. Um, and, uh, my battery's gonna die, so we're gonna wrap this up here, I guess. There's a piece of hair in my eye. Ugh. Okay, so, yes. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. I think I've got everything. So remember, show notes can be found over at freakishlemon.com. You can follow me on Instagram, on Ravelry, on Twitter, on Tumblr, on Pinterest if you really want to. I'm not really on Pinterest all that often. Usually it's just kind of a to-do list of things that one day I will make. Um, I don't think it's that interesting, but if you want to, I'm on there. Um, and I'm freakish lemon on all of those things. Uh, and don't forget to check out my Etsy shop over at freakishlemon.etsy.com. I do these shop updates and I don't tell you where the shop is. That's really stupid. So freakishlemon.etsy.com. Um, when in doubt, try freakish lemon because I'm pretty good about nabbing that username. Pretty good. Of course, next time I go to grab it from somewhere new, it'll be gone, but, you know, I try. I try to keep things the same. Um, yes, so that's it. So, thank you for watching. I just realized now that I never welcomed anybody to the show, new viewers or returning viewers, because I'm great at this. Too late now. Okay, so that's it. I'm going to turn this camera off and charge it properly. And I'm going to finally put this room back together because it's been like three hours now. Mm. Commitment to my hobbies. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye.